morning. It's Barbara. Thank you for joining me for coffee. I forgot to show you my gizmo. Oh, well. I forgot to look at my gizmo. It feels kind of cool out here. I'm thinking maybe I need this little sweater. Which I happen to have. <laughs> Cicadas are loud today. I'm going to have to put more nectar in my hummingbird feeder because it got a lot of activity yesterday. So I made mashed potatoes, quote unquote, yesterday. They were good. They tasted like mashed potatoes. Um, but the problem with the difference between what I made, which is made out of egg whites and um, some cream cheese and some sour cream and some different things to give it some different texture and flavor. And regular potatoes is, of course, regular potatoes are made out of carbs. And there's something, you know, carbs are addictive. And so carbs don't fill you up in the same way as protein and fat does. So where I could eat a lot of mashed potatoes that were really mashed potatoes because, you know, it's like the dessert stomach. You have a carb stomach almost. Um, you can't eat a lot of these because these are really nutritionally dense. They actually have nutrition in them and, you know, they're full of protein and fat. And so they're very satiating and so you can only eat a little bit. <laughs> so that's, that. you know, in your mind you're going to have this big pile of mashed potatoes and in the end you have a little pile <laughs> because you can't eat any more than that. But it did read very much like mashed potatoes. I think we blended them a little too long so they were a little more pasty than mashed potatoes usually get. I mean you occasionally can get mashed potatoes really pasty if you have like too much cream in it or something. I'm not sure. But anyway, but it really did read a lot like mashed potatoes and if we were having a meal, you know, that had meat and gravy and you know broccoli and whatever and this pile of mashed potatoes that would have worked great but of course it's the only thing I made <laughs> and I made it early in the day so by the time we had it for dinner I ended up turning it into uh, like a mashed potato pancake with cheese and stuff in it and it turned out really good but that's all Laura and I could eat we were supposed to have burgers with it but we didn't have any room It was pretty interesting, pretty interesting. But it did read a lot like mashed potatoes, but it was, you know, well, I had, I did take some video and I will put it at the end so you can see, see what I did. Um, uh, Simona said, why didn't you make a half a recipe? Which was a good suggestion because we ended up with more than we needed. But I forgot to mention, I mean, it took uh, 32 ounces of egg white. But I just wanted to let you know, we've been collecting the egg whites over the last couple of weeks because we give egg yolks to our dogs on their dinner. So we always ha have tons of egg whites. And so we collected those egg whites. And, you know, so this was just, we have to do something with these egg whites. It wasn't that we separated 32 eggs. <laughs> to make these mashed potatoes. These mashed potatoes were made with our leftover egg whites. And when we had originally thought about making this, we bought some quarts of pasteurized egg whites, or little pints of pasteurized egg whites, which we still have. We decided to use the egg whites we had collected since we think the ones in the carton are pasteurized. Um, so they'll last longer. So anyway, these were egg whites that in the past we would have normally just thrown out because we don't do a lot of things that use just egg whites. We, can, we start saving them when we're thinking about making something meringue or, um, you know, whatever. In the past, we used to buy what we call dog eggs, which, you know, because we get pasture-raised, free-range eggs for us, organic. Um, but we figured the dogs you know, but when the price of eggs got so high that it started, stopped making any sense to worry about separating their eggs from our eggs. 
So the egg whites are high quality, and so we're happy to eat them when we come up with something to make them with. Anyway, so just to let you know, we didn't just go out and separate 32 eggs, <laughs> or 32 ounces of egg whites. We had been collecting them. So anyway, that, that was interesting. Um, yeah, so I'm going to, I'm going to make my, see how they resuscitate because of course it made more than I ate or than I ate yesterday and, uh, think of some ways that you use leftover mashed potatoes that I could use this for to make other things if I wanted to. Um, and this would work great for like shepherd's pie where you put um, mashed potatoes on top of meat and vegetables and bake it. It would work very well for that. So anyway, but I'll put that at the end. So I guess I'm editing today. <laughs> so I'm very worried about Maisie. She's got a foot problem and we didn't realize it. She started limping yesterday, late morning. We realized that she was limping. And we couldn't figure out where it was sore. You know, we went all along her leg and everything and thought she maybe had stepped in a hole or something. We have, you know, they make holes. and So we called the vet to see if we could give her Tylenol or some human anti-inflammatory, anti-pain type drug because we didn't have any doggy ones. And we never heard back from the vet until like seven o'clock Dennis realized that they had called us back actually quite quickly, only within an hour of us calling them, but our phone didn't ring. And we, ha we have an internet phone bondage Occasionally we have some weirdnesses with it because Dennis has a app on his phone so that he can answer our house phone with his cell phone. And occasionally what happens is only his cell phone rings. And it's like, uh, we'll call you back from the house because talking on cell phones doesn't work great at our house anyway. This time nothing rang. And uh, so it went to voicemail at Vonage, which of course is not our phone it's on the internet so Dennis checks it periodically found out they had called us back but it was too late they were not there anymore so we felt really bad about that and Maisie was still limping and we didn't take her for a walk we couldn't figure out why she was limping or where the pain was or whatever so last night about two o'clock in the morning, 2.30, Dennis realizes Maisie's sitting there licking on her foot like crazy. So he gets up and gets the flashlight and whatever. We'll turn the light on and turns out he finds this little tiny piece of something in her foot, like in the, like, like, like in the toe so that when he like pushed on her foot, it didn't hurt her because it was right at the tip of her toe. So now that's very tender. He got this little tiny piece out. And I'm like, ah, I find it very hard to believe that little tiny piece was it. You know, but she had been looking on it for a while. And it's possible she had worked out some of it. And who knows? Anyway, she's still limping this morning. Dennis isn't sure he got it all. Called the vet. And they're closed today because of some HVAC cleaning something. And I'm like. So now they have called us back. We didn't know. We didn't talk to them. Now they're not there today. Our emergency vet closed for emergency services. I'm not sure if they've reopened. Anyway, so I'm feeling worried about Maisie and her toe. And of course, She's all black. Everything's black. It's very hard to see anything. And now she's very wary of letting us touch her foot because, you know, alcohol hurts. Dennis put alcohol on it last night after he took the splinter out. So now she doesn't trust us, which I don't blame her. We didn't fix her problem. So anyway, so I don't know what we're going to do. We do have... 
and we have um, eye doctor appointments this afternoon. We made an appointment, and I might have probably told you all about this. So we had, for 20 years since we moved here, more than 20 years since we moved here, we've gone to a ophthalmologist who um, was Dennis's family's eye doctor um, for years, Dr. Leonard, and um, his son, Barry, became Dr. Barry, and so the, that family, you know, the Hoovers have been going to the Konofskis for eye care for 60 years. Anyway, Dr. Barry retired during COVID and we haven't found a doctor that we liked. And the thing, one of the nice things about Dr. Barry was he's got a, a glasses, he sells glasses and you know, he's got a little clinic, glasses clinic in his practice. And as part of that practice, they spit you and you buy your glasses from them and they're extremely high quality. They're not cheap but they're extremely high quality. And that was one of the problems that Dennis and I had when we went to an eye doctor locally. Because once Dr. Barry retired, this eye doctor office is an hour from our house. 45 minutes, 50, something like that. And so we thought we'll get somebody, or I went to somebody, um, has been going to somebody closer. We went there, but we couldn't figure out where to get our glasses because we were so used to high quality glasses that we were not we got ended up getting our glasses at Costco and we're not happy they couldn't recommend anybody you know like a high quality lab that we could get our glasses so we weren't happy with the glasses these are my glasses my not my not teal glasses are from Costco and I've been using them and they've been fine Dennis hasn't even used the glasses he got at Costco he's been very unhappy with them for one reason or another and we hadn't taken them back and it still didn't help so we decided to go back to Dr. Barry's old practice. He had other doctors with him. They're still there. And um, they still have their glasses se section. So anyway, we're going there today. And so it's 45 minutes to an hour to get there. And now that I'm sitting here talking to you, I'm remembering that I think they moved. So we have to figure out where they are. And, uh, yeah, so, anyway, on and on, I'm talking on and on, so I'm very upset about maybe. Anyway, so that's our day today. I'm, um, I read a book yesterday. I read that whole Louise Penny book, the second book in the Gamash series. I really enjoyed it, and I really enjoyed her writing. Um, and, you know, I just really really enjoyed it a lot and um, unfortunately the third book I is like a 13 week wait I mean I think she's on book 26 for some ridiculously high number why would number three be such a long wait in my electronic um, thing so anyway But I do have a, another book that um, I need to read, need to give back soon, and I'm going to read it today because I feel like I need to read. But it is really gorgeous out here. I should have done the gizmo. It's probably, I'm a little cool in the breeze, so it's probably 72 out here is my guess. And um, gorgeous. So I'll just sit out here and read. When I'm not going to the eye doctor or worrying about my dog. So I'm going to go say, I'm going to say goodbye. I'm just rambling. I will put the making of the mashed potatoes at the end of this. Feel free to skip it. It's weird. Um, and, uh, but I don't think it's very long. And yeah. So I will talk to you tomorrow. So please, please take good care of yourselves. Please stay safe.
and stay sane. I was right. There's the gizmo. 72. Really gorgeous out there. Anyway, stay safe and stay sane. Okay, I said I wasn't going to video this, but this means I'm going to have to edit tomorrow morning. <laughs> um, so this is 32 ounces by weight of egg whites cooked until it's dry in an entire stick of butter. It's not quite dry. We're still getting a little bit of steam, but we're cooking very low because we want no color because they're supposed to look like potatoes. I'm making carnivore mashed potatoes. It's such a crazy thing. All right, so these are dry-ish, dry enough, I think. I'll leave them here to, Dennis can keep stirring them if he, if he wants. Here's my Maison Plus of many things in the kitchen. This is sour cream, cream cheese, and Parmesan cheese. This is fresh mozzarella. Oh, this is the Parmesan isn't in here. This is just sour cream and cream cheese. And this is the toasted, <laughs> toasted um, gelatin that I showed you earlier. I showed you in today's video. The untoasted gelatin, salt, white pepper, and garlic powder. So these things all go in the food processor first and then we put in the eggs and turn them into mashed potatoes and one last thing after two tablespoons of egg white powder go in um, at the very end. So hold on. So there we go. All the other stuff is in there. That's the mozzarella, little mozzarella balls. And now we put the eggs in on top. And then we blend, blend, blend. I'll let Dennis do that. I'll be the videographer. Wasn't sure if the there would be enough volume of stuff to use the big bowl of the food processor but clearly there is and the little one would never have worked so this is gonna make a lot of potatoes <laughs> if you want to call them that i do love me some mashed potatoes so i really hope we like how this tastes really 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 i'm gonna get the scraper Okay, now we're supposed to start it on slow and then go faster. He made his in a blender, so I don't know how much. There is that. no slow. Okay, there is no slow. <laughs> it's not There's a blender. only on and off. Oh, there's only on and off. Okay, this is crazy, but it really reads like mashed potatoes. Certainly as close to mashed potatoes as we're going to get, since we can't eat potatoes. Oh, yeah. Yum. Carnivore. Crazy. So, I'm having mashed potatoes with uh, beef and gravy on, unless we decide to go to the store. And, no, we'll go do that. We'll have burger and oh, like a mashed potato bowl, like comfort food. Crazy. Anyway, there you go. I can't believe it.